This Roundtable episode is brought to you by Tyree Lights. Tyree Lights is known as an industry leader in lighting and heavy vehicle and uh, heavy vehicles and mining, forestry, construction, agricultural, and material handling. Now Tyree Lights Off-Road brings the same strength and quality to your Jeep. Find out more about Tyree Lights at tyreeoffroad.com. That's T-Y-R-I offroad.com. Hi, I'm Tony. I want to welcome all you new listeners, our regulars to the Jeep Talk Show Roundtable. I'm your host, and I'm excited to have you here for this special gathering of passionate Jeep enthusiasts. On tonight's episode, I'll be asking you, have you upgraded your brakes? Well, talk about something that's not fancy or showy at all. I mean, I guess you could put lights on them or something. Uh, based on uh, personal experience, what is the trail or area other than Moab you would recommend to folks to add to their 2024 trail list? Is there a maintenance item that you that used to be scared to do, but after trying it yourself, found out it was simple, and you do it rather than taking it in? What is the single heaviest modification you have made to your Jeep? And that's that's the fourth question, which we'll probably never get to. But anyway, it's there. We may get to it. Oh, by the way, you can submit your questions for the roundtable, just like these were submitted here to us. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find out how to submit those questions. Are you ready? It's time for the Jeep Talk Show with hosts Tony, Josh, Wendy, and Chuck. Hey, whether you are a diehard Jeep enthusiast or just starting to explore the world of off-roading, we're thrilled to have you as part of this discussion. Please consider joining the discussion and uh, by being part of our Zoom weekly meeting. JeepTalkShow.com slash contact to find out how to join. So Chris was asking me, are, are we still doing Patreon? Because I've been listening to several episodes and I haven't heard you talking about Patreon. I said, yeah, yeah, we have, we are. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the number of... Uh, uh, subscriptions has uh, really leveled off and uh, but you know we'll get back to it uh, i just don't feel like uh, wasting a bunch of time in the the beginning of an episode uh, begging and pleading and giving announcements and all that stuff is the reason why people are here uh, i mean i understand you kind of nothing's free and you got to pay for it one way or another right uh, but uh, so i haven't been talking too much about the patreon but it's still there you can still subscribe I think we're up to 48 subscribers. Got a goal of 100. If you'd like to uh, join, especially now that we're in the 2024, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, and as little as $5 gets you supported, uh, gets you started supporting the show. All right, to our round table meeting attendees, please introduce yourself with your name and location the first time you speak tonight. This helps the listeners know your voice when you speak. Here it is. This is my favorite part. Hello, Zoom people. Hey, 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 Tony. Tony. I got to remember to unmute. So, <laughs> unmuted. There we go. <laughs> All right. Did everybody have a good uh, New Year's? I think we. Uh, I think we've spoken since New Year's. But uh, is everything uh, lining out for you guys? Pretty well. Minus the windstorm last when night. Yeah, wind cold. Crazy last night. Still ongoing. We had uh, we had quite a bit of wind. I was act, uh, actually outside trimming the, uh, the the little tree, the little pear tree that my wife planted uh, a number of years ago, because uh, I had a couple of uh, uh, I had one antenna that was kind of uh, misaligned, and I have another one with a bent element. So uh, it's some uh, some satellite antennas that I put up uh, that I have yet to uh, run the coax and the control cables for the. Uh, uh, for the rotor, uh, and so they're still mm -hmm. down a little bit until I get the get them uh, fully installed. And uh, went out there was uh, cutting limbs today, so I could uh, free up uh, some space there. All right, so let's get to this first one. I thought this was a good question, and and I, I mean I think we think of it, but don't really consider it to being one of those sexy uh, updates. Have you upgraded your brakes? This is uh, John Central Texas. I'll kind of go first here. So uh, I did the Dynatrack Pro Grip Big Brake Kit, which is a uh, it's a rotor and pad update as well as um, brackets to extend your stock calipers out. So um, I was looking at a lot of the uh, upgrade options. You know, going to like dual caliper pistons, two dual piston calipers, doing all that kind of stuff. The, the problem kept coming back to well, you can 
you got to push more fluids. So you need a bigger brake booster. You need all that. Like there was a lot of stuff going through. You can't well, it's just like going to, it's like going to forties, right? I mean, you, you, you can't just do one thing. You have to have a whole series of things you got to change. Right. And if you just try to throw on huge calipers and all that kind of stuff straight off the bat on it, you're not really, I mean, I'm sure you're helping a little bit, but it, you don't have the, the fluid volume to really get the, the big benefit out of it. So I just, I went with the pro grip kit, which is bigger rotors and, uh, you know, specific pads from Dynatrack. But the one thing that I'll say that I like it, it works awesome, but I, the problem with it is, is those rotors are very specific to Dynatrack. So if I'm out and about and I have a problem, like I actually did recently where I had, um, caliper jam on me and grind the pad all the way down and start scoring the rotor you can't just go to AutoZone and pick up another rotor i had to go back to dynatrack and, and order well that's something you have so, to consider whenever you do an upgrade isn't it because like it's where am i going to get these things or do i have to carry this around as spares right and and so i think that's that's a that's a big one but it, the problem is just the size and the five lug bolt pattern most of them at that size have eight lug bolt patterns or, or whatever because they're meant for for heavy duty trucks and and um the uh the other big thing is i went with a smooth rotor not the slotted and drilled so it may be just paranoia on my part but i would think that you know slotted and drilled rotors when you're going through mud and dirt and everything off road would would kind of be bad um for, for your brakes yeah, that's a good so, point uh, i don't i don't believe in slotted and drilled for off-road vehicles uh for a number of reasons but that being one of them I and mean, it's you got a race car or you're trying to be a race car and you want to have uh, the 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 brake uh, being cooled and so on and so forth but i look at the holes as just being a way to have less surface area to uh, clamp down on yeah i mean it's meant to dissipate heat right. ultimately and we're not going at the the high speed levels of, I mean, it's not that we're not generating heat on our brakes. Let's be honest. It's a lot of 6,000 plus pounds on some of these rigs kind of holding them back. Um, but a lot of wheelers are, you know, you're using gears and everything else at low speed too. So, um, but I will say just the reason why I upgraded them was because when I upgraded to the bigger tires, it was one of the most obvious things from driving even more so than my, my gears. Cause I came with factory 410. So even before I re-geared to where I'm at now, um, the the loss of brake was was very apparent. Did so you did you was, notice a big improvement in braking? I would hope so. I, I imagine oh, yeah. you spent quite a bit. Oh, for that. Yeah, it, it was a night and day. It's one of the most stark night and days. Just from you know pushing on that that pedal um, and, and getting the, uh, the the stopping power after upgrading to the bigger tires. Has stuff. it helped so, you? I mean, it's not, has I it helped you? Think it has it helped you off road? I mean, obviously on road, yes. I don't know. I don't know. If there's a lot of ways to say it really helped me off road at that point, but but on road, I think is where I was looking for. I was looking for right. more, you know, drivability, highway, you know, stop and go stuff like that. But uh, off road, I don't know. I think I think the only thing that would help you off road is if you got the bigger booster and you actually got more actual volume based clamping power. Um, then maybe Are you going that direction. But, um maybe down the road i think you know if we get, get a little bit bigger tires i'm happy with my setup right now um the only the only thing is 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 i've got about a millimeter of clearance between the uh the rotors and the rims on the well, inside be my next question inside. if you had to change rim sizes uh now you have a jk uh a jku right. uh is it uh, is 17 the standard uh wheel size for the jk as well and is that what you're running it is, and uh, so it's the same as the factory has 17s, but uh, and they'll fit. But it, they actually warn you on the on the label. They give you this little template to cut out that you can download that uh, you can put up in there because, as they say, not all 17s are are made oh. the same. And depending kind of you know who where what manufacturer your wheel have the the interior side of that wheel, you know you could have because it's that close. I mean, it's just it's so close. You could end up with. Uh, with some interference issues so luckily the i, I had the icon alloys or whatever and uh they uh they work pretty well um with that guy i didn't have any clearance issues well it's it's self-clearing right i mean it, it'll clearance itself over time <laughs> <laughs> well i'm always worried i'm gonna get something stuck in there like a, a rocker something yeah. like that and it's it's gonna wedge in pretty hard so all right anybody else have you upgraded your brakes are you thinking about doing it <laughs> Uh, I could I could well imagine Rick. This has to be on your list of things to do. Yeah, I was <clears throat> Rick from Arkansas. I was just fixing to say I'm uh, 
ever since we did the uh, hot springs deep dive on that there was that one hill that we went down dive <laughs> yeah dive <laughs> and uh yeah it was a dry dive though wasn't oh, a wet dive I'm sorry. so try we some were, roses next time yeah as we was going down that i mean my brakes were squealing all the way down and then when i got down to the bottom by the time well by the time i got down to the bottom they they were what you call brake fade and they would just they kind of let go a little bit even though i was i mean i had a mash down to the floor pretty much that's, that's, and that's uh, the scary and, thing and there, yeah, i mean that's I, scary <laughs> yeah yeah i keep them serviced and all that good but the, about the last 20 feet i bounced down you know john was talking about how i uh you know tested out every skid plate i had is but, this uh, when you wound so up I've in the lake was at, the lake your buffer your stopping buffer is that what kept you from going uh, <laughs> <laughs> well every, everybody at the bottom of the hill cleared out i mean it was that <laughs> no, it was that kind, of, uh, kind of uh that kind of movement but uh i'm looking at uh there's a thing you can do the tj's uh it's a wj right. swap and you basically put the wj knuckles on there and with the WJ Knuckles, they have a dual piston uh, brake. And, uh, and, you know, there's some other upgrades you got to do. You got to run with it. But it's all it's all factory parts, even though it would be a factory part off of a WJ. But it's still, you know, it's a, still a brake rotor that I can go get at the local parts Auto, store. AutoZone would understand what you're talking about, but they would be really confused if you didn't answer their questions. And then you had to say, with the but. Grand, yeah. <laughs> It's, but you have to, but I have this on there and it's this, this, and they go, Oh, I'm gonna have to call the supervisor. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. The, uh, the only, the only, uh, hesitation I have is just depending on how you run your, your steering, uh, you can get into it, uh, clearance issues with the, uh, with the sway, the passenger side sway bar connect and the, uh, <clears throat> and the, uh, track mm -hmm. bar, uh, where it connects. And some, some of the guys, you know, they do some pretty, pretty crazy fabrication <laughs> there, but anyway, I'm, I'm still looking at it, studying it, do you, do watching you have to change, every video. Do you have to change wheel diameter from 15 to something else? Cause the TJ standard is 15. It, <clears throat> right. It's if you have a, a like my, minor, minor out, out anyway, and I can't remember what the offset is, but my, and so if you have an offset on your rims, you know, it, it's one, it's, it's one of those things that's, uh, you know, they get pretty close, but, but they will clear. So your backspace kind of moves just, it further away from, uh, the, the inside or <clears throat> so it right. kind of pushes the wheels. Yeah, when I'm, right. When I went to the 33, so that I, I didn't want to run spacers. So I, you know, I got rims that, that pushed my wheels out a little, enough to clear the everything. Have you, uh, have you had but to change you know. the wheel bearing assemblies yet? Because of, uh, it, I don't know how far your backspace is, but I know that, uh, having backspace, uh, mm -hmm. kind of out, and this is also too critical with, uh, spacers because spacers will put a lot of more pressure on those wheel bearing assemblies, uh, right. with the wheels sticking out. Right. Looks damn good though. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, so far, so far, I mean, they've been, been solid, but when I, when I do this, uh, of course I'm, I'm. I'm getting a new or new new to me rear axle and I'm going to change out the hubs there and new to me front axle. So that and that's part of the reason why I'm looking at it too is when I I swap in that uh that 44 is I'm thinking I may go ahead and just do this knuckle swap too and put the bigger brakes Oh yeah, that makes there. a perfect that makes perfect sense. Why uh why take have it down <coughs> just to do it on the axles before you install them. Yeah. All right, good. So Hey, Tony, it's Matt from North yeah, Carolina. Just, just one more comment. So uh, you'd mentioned before, you know, in, in, you know, if a race driver went and, you know, drilled the slotted rotors. And I actually, I, I tracked my, uh, a car I had that I'd souped up uh, several years back. And how we, how we looked at it at that point was, unless, and so let's, let's go ahead and um, not talk about, like, if you get bigger brakes, right? Like if you, if you upsize your entire assembly, you get a mechanical advantage there. You get increased pad size. But if you're just swapping stuff, we would use flat blank rotors because there's there's no need even on track. Like the the only thing that those drills are getting you is off gassing, and you're not going to float a pad even at you know a thousand degrees on track. You know uh, you know without a race car. 
So you like just go with bike rotors. Don't don't pay extra for for those rotors. But the pads, you have complete control over getting you know something that's going to last a hundred thousand miles or last ten, and that's going to be your big bite and fix everything. And then you know on the off road stuff, we all you know most of us daily drive. So you, like the next step is brake fluid and getting something that won't compress as easily. And but you're you're not going to want to do that because then you have to change your brake fluid every five thousand miles or something if you upgrade that. Yeah, I I know. Uh, I'm glad that you brought that up. Uh, the brake pads. Um, I used to just go with the cheapest brake pads I could, and on the XJ, uh, you need stopping power because it's drums on the back. So uh, the the pads mm-hmm. on the front were were really important. And then when I started spending just a little bit more, and for the life of me, I can't remember if they're semi metallic or or what they are. But I went to a different type of pad, and it was it was a, a very big difference in stopping. Uh, the people that were because uh, we have inspections out here in, in Texas at least till uh, well for this year I think twenty twenty five it goes away. Uh, but I would uh, people. <laughs> The people inspecting my Jeep would say, "Well, those brakes are a little iffy because they, you know, they'd have to do the the, the emergency stop." And then uh, even with the the XJ on thirty threes, it was uh, it was having trouble. Well, there was a lot of extra weight on the XJ too, mm-hmm. so that made a difference. Yeah, but brakes uh, having that that stopping power is really really nice as long as the the tires and wheels don't lock up, especially on uh, wet surfaces. Uh, so, <laughs> a huge difference with the Gladiator. I, I, when I test drove the first Gladiator, I had trouble stopping with it because it was very jerky because I was used to pressing the pedal, you know, so far. And then I'm not, I mean, I don't think it was uh, a vast difference in, in pressing, but boy, that thing would, it would, uh, it would throw you forward whenever I was just trying to stop the Gladiator. Imagine going from a YJ with zero. Well, brakes. you use a uh, uh, you use one, a drogue that's shoot. One for, great I'm you, do. you use a drogue shoot on that YJ, don't you? You just throw it out and hope. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's terrible. I've got no brakes on that one, and that's I was wanting to listen to more people doing upgrades because when I get that transmission done, that is transmission and brakes. Because um, it, I don't have brakes. I have upgraded my brake booster. I need to. Uh, upgrade everything else in that system i mean that was one of the first upgrades i did was a brake booster thinking hey get more fluid down there let's get it stopped that hasn't helped uh but i went from that to a 4xe you know jlu with regenerative braking and it stops on a dime so So i I know your i think your name is travis but where are you located i'm in north North Carolina. carolina travis um, so, uh, and it's drum, drum brakes on the back of the YJ, right? It's the same drum yeah. on the back of the yeah. YJ. Yeah. Uh, any thoughts about, uh, changing that out to disc? Yes. Uh, a lot of thoughts and, and that's, I'm weighing everything out. Um, what's your, what's your rear axle I on keep, the, uh, on the YJ? Is it a, uh, a 35? 35. It is a 35. I've not upgraded my axles on my watch. What are the options? Is it the same thing like for an XJ where you can put a uh, Ford 8.8 or uh, a 44? Um, I, I guess there really isn't a lot of bolt-in options uh, for that unless you spend a, b- a bunch of money. With the money, uh, I've, I've looked at uh, not what, what's Josh always talking about when you when you case it over and you make it stronger that option right on my rear you talking about trussing it trussing it yes that's the word i was looking for (laughs) yes yes that's what i've considered i've looked i mean i've got buddies that have that have that have upgraded across the board um i just i I will do it one day but right now it's expensive i just need to very expensive you will so is everything else i do to it and the other jeep i've got now I mean, it just, it's never ending. It's like, what do I want to do first? Like I, I keep dropping money in my new Jeep and I'm like, I get upset. I was out this past weekend at a big event and I'm like, uh, my YJ could be a show and shine vehicle. Whereas my new Jeep is not there yet. And I'm like, I could put money into my YJ and I need to do this with my YJ. I need to quit spending money on the new Jeep, but and Jeeps, I mean, that's it. It's just just empty every pocket. 
I get excited about one thing and I just <laughs> I focus on it, then I, I'm going to switch back and go back to the YJ. YJ is my heart and well, soul. Well, the, the exciting thing you know, is, is I, that the, they're they're not making YJs anymore, and you have one. No, you've had it for a long. time. Well, they're time. not making XJs anymore, and and you. That's what I'm saying. How often do you drive yours? Right. You know, it it sits there and it literally is sitting without a transmission, just sitting no, there. It has a transmission. And uh, I just uh, your I'm t- oh, mine. Okay, mine okay. doesn't. <laughs> you know, yeah. I just I need to just I need to just get it and take and it you out. You know, mine has it. an AW4, which is what I think you're trying to put in yours. <laughs> I, I've, I've got that in there. That's what I did. Switch over to, and now I've got to have it rebuilt. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. I thought it was being installed. I didn't realize it yeah. had to be rebuilt. No, no. I've I've already got it in there. I put it in there originally when I pulled the four point two motor out. I went from the four point two to the four point oh. I've got the same engine you do and same mm-hmm. axle or same transmission. Right. Um, I just got to rebuild that transmission now. It's never been rebuilt. Never been touched. The engine, when I pulled it and put it in, I had it rebuilt. Uh, transmission, I did so not. So I've never, I've never so. done this research. I don't know if you have or not. Um, and this is off topic, but uh, I, I know the Chrysler eight and a quarter on the XJ is a, a really good axle, with the exception of the uh, if you break an axle, it it can uh, uh, the the axle can actually walk out because of uh, the C clips that are in it. Uh, but uh, it's a very heavy-duty axle. Um, uh, I mean, 35s locked. I've been told are just fine for an eight and a quarter, and it's a leaf spring axle. Do you know if it would fit? Um, I mean, not having to, to take off any of the brackets or anything, and it, just a bolt. I have not looked into that, and I will because I think that would be. I've seen it before. I've seen it on different you know sites I'm on and, and groups and, and forums. But I've never truly looked into it. Um, but now you mentioned that again, and, and I, I like what you say and what I learned from this group. And I do a lot of research from what I hear from you guys and, and take it and, and run with. So the eight and a quarters were actually used in uh, the, the Jeep Liberty. And the Jeep Liberty uh, had uh, disc brakes on those rear axles. So, I mean, I mean, it absolutely would work if you had to put new brackets on it. But, I mean, it would be really cool if you could just get a $100, uh, eight and a quarter, uh, 30, what was it, 33 spline? I think, there, I think the, 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 the anything after 97 was 33 spline. I'm probably getting that wrong. Uh, but uh, it, 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 or maybe it was 27. I think it was 27 spline. Anyway, it was better than the ones prior to 97 that had uh, uh, 23 or so. Anyway, it's a strong axle. And it'd be really cool if you could just do uh, uh, disc brakes uh, and a uh, heavier duty axle all at the same time. That day, those thirty one. fives are just so scary. Well, let's if I ever run the thirty fives on the X or the well, YJ. Really have to. 33s I mean, it's, it's are thirty threes on it now. Yeah, thirty threes are all I've ever wanted on it. Uh, I mean, I've got thirty fives on the JLU now, and I, I'm I'm debating. Because I don't need 37s on the trails I'm on. You know, if I get out to Texas, if I go out to Moab, if I do different things with you guys, it might be interesting. But the reality of it is, once I have my new fenders on, I've got the clearance both directions. I truly don't think I need to go 37. I'm like, eh, I can spend more money. It'll look cooler. I was going to say, the kids love the 37s, though, you know? Right. (laughs) You know, it's like, I, I really don't, I don't think I need it. I'm like, there's well, you don't. not I mean, really a yeah, point. We've, we've talked it, about it many times. A, a stock Jeep will do a lot of things, uh, <clears> most anything yeah. you would ever want to do. So, uh, But it's it's just fun, and it, it, it gives it a different look. And uh, I know that uh, it looks yeah, I know good. going off-road uh, with uh, the, the stock tires uh, and then the 35s, there was places that I was, uh, that I was rubbing before that I wasn't rubbing anymore. So it does make a difference and it just, uh, just makes it easier. I mean, that's kind of the whole thing is all the modifications. So right. if you do it right uh, and pick the right things, it just makes it easier. All right. Anybody else uh, changing brakes? Uh, have you upgraded your brakes uh, on, uh, on your Jeep? I think um, unless it's a modern day Jeep, probably everybody thinks about uh, why well, I really need to do that. It's, it's only in North Florida. So I, I have two things. Um, on our LJ on 33s, it always had great brakes, but uh, when the last pe- set of pets uh, was worn out, 
I changed them over to uh, Black Magic brakes. Oh, good point. Uh, yeah. from, Mr. from Mr. Blaine, and uh, the difference is is amazing. I mean, it comes at a price; it has more brake dust, but uh, the brake power is is amazing. This is this is really a great upgrade on the cheap by just replacing brake pads, and uh, that makes a big big difference. Um, on the TJ and I mean, the platform is very temperamental. <laughs> uh, the TJ never had good brakes, even on 33s, uh, let alone with 35s. Um, so on on the TJ, many, many years ago, I switched over to, at the time it was called Venko, uh, big brake kit. Uh, meanwhile, it's being sold by Mr. Blaine as well. And uh, I think it was designed by him together with Venko, um, and this big brake kit made a huge difference on the TJ. Uh, on 35s, I can I can lock up the fronts at will, uh, but it is a very very good brake up upgrade in that sense that I can press down and clamp down, uh, and I can feel exactly where the TJ is and what it's doing, and I can modulate the brake without uh, locking up the front tires or anything. So that that was a huge update, and I love that. Yeah, Mr. Blaine, uh, uh, we interviewed him a while back, and he actually sent – I told him no uh, several times, but he actually sent me a set of brakes uh, for the TJ, for my wife's TJ. And uh, my wife drives the the TJ so little uh, that it – I mean, gosh, it's been two, three, maybe four years ago. Uh, when I when we interviewed uh, um, uh, Mr. Blaine and a good interview, it really interesting on the uh, uh, the the whole uh, Black Magic Break thing, uh, which I'll, I'll I'll mention this really quick. Uh, it's just blackmagicbreaks dot com if you've not heard of it. And I did see there it looked real quick. Uh, he does have uh, breaks for JKs as well. I'm not sure if he has it uh, for anything uh, newer than that. But if you got a JK, a TJ, an XJ. I think he does XJs, uh, but anyway, I just installed those uh, on uh, the wife's uh, the wife's TJ not too long ago, and he sent me uh, uh, drums and pads and um, uh, not calipers. I think uh, I actually bought some calipers because you know if you're going to go through that stuff, you might as well get uh, get it all on there. Oh, by the way, the uh, the big ray kit for the TJ should also fit on the Dana 30 or Dana 44 on a, the on a YJ. I've yep. looked into it. That's one kit I have looked into and I've been impressed with. And again, just debating. For, for years, it was not a daily driver. It was trail only. And for a hot minute, a few years back, I had to my – I had a Tacoma. You guys that have been here for a while knew that for a while. And I wrecked it, hit a deer. So I was driving the YJ day and back and forth to work. And I was like, yeah, I need to do these breaks. So did that deer look like a telephone I mean, I pole? Because I remember kids. it being a telephone pole. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The telephone pole was my little, my other car this I is, had. This is the bad thing about being a regular on the show and uh, long memories. <laughs> I had a, I had a, I had a telephone pole on, on my Toyota, no, another Toyota. Ah, okay wasn't the Tacoma. It was, uh, that was a little baby car. I had little, I had a little Corolla. I had a telephone. Well, damn it. I can't find the episode that we had Mr. Blaine on. Uh, I like, I like mentioning that. So you can go back and find those things. You guys can always do a search. Probably a Google search would be a best way of finding it. I'm uh, doing the search on the Jeep talk show.com website. Uh, but that was a good interview and uh, really, really nice stuff. We, and if you, if you speak to Mr. Blaine, tell him we want him back on the show. I would support that. He's a great yeah. guy. All right. Anybody else got some break information? And somebody brought up the power stop breaks. I'm late, late to the show, so I didn't know. Uh-oh. Yeah. I understand why you're gun shy. What was what was it you were asking about, uh, Roger? I said there's anybody brought up the power stop breaks. I've never heard of those. The power stop makes uh, the Z36 brakes. They're basically truck brakes. I, I swapped mine out for those along with their drilled and slotted rotors. And I believe I, they added quite a bit of braking. Because before I put them on, I already had the 37s on with speed locks. And the brake pedal sucked. It didn't work that great. And I swapped it out to the 
other brakes and rotors and definitely increase the braking especially pulling the trailer so we were talking about drilled and slotted uh, uh, rotors before what do you think that the drilled and slotted did for you i think they help to keep the pads cooler a cooler pad is gonna is gonna work work more efficient all right I mean, that, I mean, that's just, I mean, isn't that what they do? Don't they do that like with NASCAR too? I mean, it's all about the cooling. You, you know, they put, they duct air right into the brake rotors on like NASCAR to help keep the brakes cooler. It's, I mean, obviously to stop them start on fire, but also cooler, cooler brake pads will work more efficient. You know, you heat them up like in a semi, if they get too hot, they get glazed over and then they're worthless. Oh, that's a good, that's a good you know, point. So, do the semis, do they have uh, drilled and slotted rotors for, for semis? No, they don't, but we need all the braking power we can. So, I mean, you just got to be smart about how you go up or down, or how you go down a hill. You know, you, you stab brake it, you know, you break it down 500 RPMs and, or you let it speed back up and you break it down. So every time you let off the brake pedal, you know, you're essentially bringing in full air. But I mean, to teach somebody how to do that in a four, four wheel vehicle, you know, with anti-lock brakes, you know, yeah. but i think in i think in the jeep i think the drill and slot the drill and slot help because the, the the rotors themselves weren't larger the the kit that i went with for the power stop brakes it was just different rotors they were the same rotors same calipers just different pads and different rotors and i noticed a big difference in braking. very nice very nice yeah, yeah I, I personally don't like the yeah. drilled and slotted rotors uh, for passenger vehicles or Jeeps or anything like that. So that's the reason why I was asking you. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, I just look at it like uh, uh, holes in the uh, in the, the rotor means less uh, area for it to uh, grab hold of. Uh, and that's the same thing with the slots. So uh, it, I just kind of get the feeling it's kind of like uh, making your, your vehicle into a race car. Um, it's just, uh, it, it doesn't make, it doesn't make it that big of a difference. If you're driving something on an oval track, maybe so, but uh, stop and go uh, traffic on the road. I, I, I just it just seems to be fancy for for no good reason. So I'm always willing to learn something well, new. So that's the reason why I was asking. Well, I th I think that when you I mean when you're doing upgrades on your vehicle, you're definitely making the, your vehicle heavier even by putting a bigger tire on there. It's more emission, more mass, you know, that you're having to stop. So I mean, to help keep the brake pads cooler is gonna it, it, as long as. You're right that if you know you, if you drill you drill them out you're losing surface. But if you don't drill them out and it causes more heat, are, is the more surface going to help you, or you, you, it's, it's not going to help because the pads are going to be hot and hot pads don't work as efficient as cooler pads. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the so, point. You know, that's kind of the like point I'm making is is that I don't think it's the same amount of heat that you would get uh, while you're driving 200 miles an hour and then having to slow down rapidly. I, I don't see that same activity going on. Uh, in your in your passenger vehicle, so that's I, I, again I have I have I would, no information uh, to back any of this stuff up. It's just my feeling and my my opinion. And maybe one of our listeners out there that are, is hearing this can uh, uh, enlighten me on uh, the, what the, the the use of uh, drilled and slotted rotors are on a passenger vehicle. Because I, I so this is Kevin from DFW. Uh, I actually came from the race oh, car good. world, and honestly, on a passenger vehicle, drilled and slotted really just eats pads. That's all it does. Now, in a race car, the pads you're using, you have to get to high temps for them to even start working. Like when you go to hit them, like when you're warming the car up and getting the tires hot so they're going to stick better, you won't have brakes. Like they'll be awful until you get them hot. And that's why you have all the drill and slotted and all that, because you need to get them hot and you need to dissipate the heat quick. So the, the drills and the drilled holes and the, the slots actually heat the brakes up? Well, they don't, no, those don't heat cold. the brakes up. The pads, <laughs> you have to get hot before yeah, they work. Sense. But because you get them so hot to work, you use that to dissipate, like the off gas gotcha. and like that. Said. So you don't want to get them too get hot them cool. because then you get brake fade. Yes. Gotcha. But you brake need, fade and your pads can glaze over. Yes, but you need, like for in the brake situation, you need those pads much hotter than you would in a passenger car situation. And, and are the pads different? Uh, is that the reason why? Is there a different uh, uh, composition? Yeah, it's a it's a much different yeah. material. Yeah, I was going to say they can't be the same as regular brake pads because regular brake pads, heat would just diminish your pad, not 
it can work. Oh, wow. And that and that's why, like I mentioned before, the uh, brake fluid. So as you like on a track, and uh, of course in, in the race application, so you're using like the the entire difference between the 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 levels of brake fluid is temperature. So like a race brake fluid maybe double the the max operating temp, but it's so much more hygroscopic that like you have to change it every like 500 miles. So because it, it just absorbs water out of the air and that water boils and everything. So it's all like the brake fluid thing is all about like being able to withstand, you know, 3000 degrees of temperature and still operate in, hyd in a hydraulic ma manner. All right. Well, I, I think we've, I think I remember something a while back or quite a while back. I remember it wasn't uh, Josh talking about changing brake fluid and how much that can actually help your brakes too. Yeah. I, th I think I went, uh, well, I mean, I, I changed brakes and the fluid would come out sometimes when I changed the calipers, but I think I went, um, actually I haven't, I haven't changed all the, I haven't changed the brake fluid in the XJ. So it's 20, I, I drove it 22 years with the same brake fluid. Uh, I mean, virtually I added brake fluid, but it's kind of like oil. Do you actually have to do an oil change in a, a 4.0 because it's leaking all the time. So you're, you're just cycling fresh oil through there anyway. <laughs> you're doing an everyday oil change is yeah. what you're saying? It's just a slow oil change. <laughs> it's never truly all oil, all brand new oil. It's just by percentage. Yeah, exactly. All right. So let's move on to this next question. Great information about brakes. I like that. I, and I, and I before, like the idea about uh, the, the slotted and uh, drilled. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah. Hey, before we move on real quick, that kind of related to that is a, a, a parking brake. Um, one of the things I'm hoping that upgrades when I move to this Dana 44, because I'll have a disc brake in the back. I'm hoping, I'm praying that the parking brake in that axle actually does something. Because right now, what I'm doing is I've I've got a uh, a Harbor Freight. Uh -oh. uh, <laughs> I've got a a uh, Harbor Freight um, crap. What do you call it? Uh, anchor. You put under your tires. Do they sell anchors? The oh, the, right. the chocks, the wheel chocks. A chock? Yeah. Yeah. chalk. Chalk. I've got a Harbor Freight chalk <laughs> tied to a strap, <laughs> and that I put under my tire, and then I move up a little bit, and then pull the the pull it up into the Jeep with me, and then drive so, on. So your strap on, emergency. Yeah, so your strap on is is not just for pleasure. It's for, it has a practical a aspect to it. Yes. <laughs> so yes. are you for, doing that because you the, decided not to change your parking brake pads or not to adjust I've, your parking I've, brake or I have ch they're brand new. I've changed them out. I've adjusted but them. But did you adjust yeah. them? I yes, mean the pad I, itself, not the not the arm in the truck, but the pad itself. Yeah, I've you know adjusted. Adjust it is a pain in the right, ass. I've, that the 2003 TJ is a pain in the ass. I my the, the one in the 2003 was frozen. I was not able to adjust it. And I went, well, I wonder if I can buy a new one. And yeah, they were, it was like next to nothing, the little adjustment thing. So I got that, adjusted it, and, and I can actually get the, the brake level, uh, the uh, lever up high enough where it will hold the Jeep in place. It'll hold the TJ in place. But, but my wife can't, is not strong enough to, un, to press the button and pull it up. <laughs> Then you, gotta just, then, then you need to adjust your cables. Then you well, that's what the adjustment is. Is a cable adjustment. Well, that's what the adjustment is. Is a cable adjustment. Well, there's a I cable took, adjustment, and there's also a there's also adjustment on right. the pat on the back side of the drum or the rotor and so on. Yeah, I took mine to a brake shop because I was I messed with it, messed with it, messed with it, put new everything in there, adjusted everything. I couldn't get it. I took it to a brake shop. It worked for about yeah. two days, and then after that, yeah. it was it was back to. I'd put it up and I'd get out of the Jeep and the Jeep start rolling. Cause my, my driveway is tilted is, is slanted just enough, you know, not a lot, but enough so that makes you that nervous. The TJ would start rolling. <laughs> it makes down. you nervous. Yeah. A little pop noise. I wonder if you need a new <laughs> brake cable. Dang it, like, hey, uh, Roger, let me make sure I, uh, I understand something. You were talking about the, the, the brake, the rear brakes themselves can be adjusted. Uh, I know that it has a self adjustment and you can adjust it yourself, but just backing up is going to uh, self adjust. Is there uh, something right. else for the rear brakes that you can adjust on a TJ? The the drum brakes that you can adjust just for the uh, the emergency brake? I don't think there is. I think there's two things. I think there's the the one on the cable, and then there's the 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 self adjusting uh, on the uh, the drums. Well, there's a uh, on the well. 
it, it, on the JK, I'm assuming TJ is, I don't know if it's the same or not, but on the back of the the wheel in the, on the JK, there's a little rubber boot and a little slot that yeah, you can put. So you a, can hit that little wheel. Like a, yeah. Like a, yeah, you can hit the wheel and you, you can move the, that moves the pads out, you know, to where they're kind of making contact with the right. inside of the, uh, of the run. So that's the only adjustment. That's all that, I, that's all that I know. And that's a self adjusting. Every time you back up, uh, it, uh, it, I don't think right. it does it every time, but it can adjust it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have very good brakes uh, because you'd always have to be adjusting those things, but they will self adjust. And I think well, it's every time you back up that they'll, they'll, that little wheel can turn. So, so there's the the adjustment there that you can do with a, a screwdriver. I guess if it's not self dressing then there's also normally a nut, like right if you pull your console out, like the the actual cable that you pull when you pull your brick mm -hmm. lever up. There's normally a nut that adjusts how tight that is on that well, end. The the thing that I saw, well, you can also adjust that mat. Underneath yeah, the thing I saw was underneath. It's, it's, it's kind of like a, a little uh, oval loop type thing where the cable goes into <laughs> and a, and it goes into connects to the handle. I I haven't done it in a while, but the it, that's where I adjusted it for the TJ. But but it's it didn't it it doesn't it's just not what where it needs to be. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I, again, happy to learn something, but I just know of two spots on the TJ that you can adjust yep. it. Yeah, right. Matt, you're Matt, you're looking at a JLU and what you and I have, you know, cause my, mm -hmm. my YJ and I, TJ's handbrake, my YJ is a foot, foot brake and you press it down, you pop mm -hmm. release it. And that setup's completely different than what everybody's oh, talking yeah. about. Yeah. Not, but it's, not, ulti it's ultimately it's, the same it's thing. Ult it's, it's, it's ultimately the same. Yes. Um, Just where it's a those different wires lever. are running. It's, it's harder. Correct. It's but, where those wires are running. It's harder it's harder to uh, but it is it's just harder to press that uh, that that foot brake to get people to back off riding your ass but that lever in the middle is really easy because you can just slow down yeah. really quick with no brake lights <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, kids, a, don't do that at home as a i would never do that <laughs> as a substitute if anybody ever wants to if you just cannot get your handbrake or your emergency brake to work period and just you just gave up on it they do make um, a line lock for your hydraulic, your draw hydraulic line for your brakes, that you can use a line lock to to do the same thing. You would basically press your brake pedal, and then you'd have a line lock that you'd turn that just locks the fluid, so that way the brakes are oh, applied. It's what I use in my airplane. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah, that's not a bad yeah, point. That's neat. All right, so anyway, let's jump over to our next question for the show's over. <laughs> Based on <laughs> it's, it's great, great information, great conversation. So I'm not complaining. I'm just picking on you. Uh, based on personal experience, what is a trail or area other than Moab? I'm hating on Moab. Uh, you would recommend uh, to folks uh, to add to their 2024 trail list, and I would assume this would be some place that maybe uh, they hadn't been before, uh, or maybe they maybe they should go again. So, what trail or, or area would you recommend people going to? And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna just cancel John on Hot Springs because it's it's just always muddy there. <laughs> well, this is Larry from Larry from St. Louis. So my my favorite is always that Ura Colorado area. You get that, that southern yep. southwest corner of Colorado. That is to me uh, the best place to wheel and scenery and all of that. But to me, that's the. That's the mecca of wheeling. So for me. obviously, what you're saying is it's it looks better to you than Moab. Oh, the scenery is, I think Moab might have a little better wheeling in spots, but for scenery, you just can't beat it. And, and could the, is the scenery still good, um, even if you don't go on Black Bear? <laughs> oh, yeah. There's plenty of other trails out there. Oh, well, the, uh, the picture behind Larry right now, that's on, uh, it was at Stony Pass. Yeah, it was in Stony. Lake City. That's a, that was an awesome view looking out over that valley right there. Yeah, that was from two years ago. Uh, Bill mapped out this awesome trail going through uh, sand dunes all the way into uh, Ure and out. Yeah, that was an all. That was an awesome. Was it two weeks or one week? I forget. One. one. Yeah, that was an awesome wheeling mm -hmm. trip. I think Colorado is an easy selection on this uh, this list. So yeah, uh, and you said oh, Ure, wow. right? Ure, yeah. Steve from uh, Chicago area. One area in Colorado does not get a lot of press, but I found was a lot of fun was uh, Estes Park, Colorado. I'm near Rocky Mountain National Park. 
a lot of good quiet trails out there. A lot of good dispersed camping up in the mountains. And there's no badge of honor trails up there, so I don't think it gets a lot of press. But I was out there in 2019, and I was I was very impressed with it. I've done like tourists. <laughs> well, uh, down in the town, yeah, but not out. In the, well, the even areas. up, even up, like going up to the, like the visitor center and stuff like that. Like it gets crazy up there. Well, that's in the park. You can go yeah. out. This is outside the park areas, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> No, no, no. Not, and, not so we actually trail. we actually did that this year, Steve, too. And uh, so there is a there is an off road trail in Rocky Mountain National Park, um, but uh, that north side of Rocky, like there's a um, the canyon that runs across the north end of Rocky Mountain National Park, is is awesome too. And there's there's a bunch of off road stuff there too. Yep. All right. Anybody else have a, a trail or an area that uh, you would recommend to uh, people to uh, go in 2024? Rick, Rick from Maybe. Arkansas, I'm, I'm looking forward to the uh, Arizona uh, wheeling that we're going to do on the way to EGS. I'm looking forward just watching some of the videos of people that, uh, yeah, I know it was off-road videos. We talked about that a while ago, but watching some of those videos, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. I'm also looking forward to getting up to S'more. I hadn't been up there yet. And I'm, it's only maybe one or 2% of the whole park has some mud in it. The rest of it's all rock and gravel and that's hot springs. <laughs> well, John was the only one that was banned from mentioning uh, hot springs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you, you said John, so I knew I was excluded. <laughs> so I would, well, uh, well, if you're, if you're going to, oh, sorry, go ahead. John. No, go ahead, Matt. Go ahead. You were on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're going to, exclude moab from the utah trails i think sand hollow definitely deserves a mention down in like southwest corner uh, by zion that place it's it's like a amusement park for fucking off-roading and as long as you're willing to go hardcore it's got everything from dunes to the hardest rock you can do and it's a awesome place to go yeah i was i was gonna add uh in addition to uh the ure area in colorado uh, back in 2019, I also went up around um, in the Gunnison area, up around a place called Taylor Park Reservoir, Tin Cup, uh, Pitkin. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of trails up and up and through that area that are amazing. Uh, for for they're, they're a little more technical trails than they are in Ure, uh, but they're still not they're not Sand Hollow or or Moab or anything like that. Yeah. They're not they're not super hard or whatever, but. Um, so I think I think if, if you just look up if you can go get that fun treks book for Colorado and you're gonna go do one big trip for the, the summer and kinda start your wheel or whatever, you can just kinda go through that fun treks book and just pick a little bit from each of the sections and make a pretty awesome trip. The the background picture that you have uh on your uh your video, John, is that uh hot springs? It is hot springs. I just I like, couldn't say it, right? It was kinda banned, yeah. so well, well, you know, it's just because I tell you something doesn't mean you have to obey. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually, uh, that's right after the ledges and the starting part of uh, Ultimate Adventure, I think, was the trail name. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's, I mean, also, a lot of depends on, I would also say, what time of year are you going to go wheeling in 2024? Um, because that, that could really, really impact kind of where you're going to go. Because if you're going to go in the, you know, in the wintertime, I'm not necessarily sure any of those passes in Colorado are even going to be open for you to take. Um, right. So it, it, it's going to be like in hot springs. I think in the fall is beautiful. As you can see behind me with the, the changing leaves and everything else, but it tends to rain a lot. Like, you know, talk about with the mud and everything else. So what is the, what is the, the, the off-road park uh, up in Pennsylvania that uh, everybody talks about? Um, I am brain farting on it, but it's a uh, wind, wind rock. No. Hey. AOA. No. Uh, what is it? No. I think you said it, Travis. No, no, I I, I was saying Wind Rocks, Tennessee. Uh Pennsylvania is uh, Rouse Creek. Rouse Creek, Rouse Creek, yeah. Rouse, Rouse Creek. Creek yeah. Is. So uh is Roush Creek a, a a good area for anybody that's gone? Maybe nobody has gone there that's that's here tonight. It's a long way to go for just uh, well, I, I, <laughs> if you go into Colorado or Utah or, or Arizona, oh, there's so this much. Is a, this is important. So is it oh, worth driving to? That depends on where you're at. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That totally depends on where you're living. 
It, it does, but I mean, personal I opinion. Only, I only know I'm, about it because exactly. Ian Johnson would be building these things, and then when he went to take it off road, that's where he would go. So I'm thinking that's that's a good part, but I, I'm sure it was just where he was well, close to. You know where he goes he, now. He, he, goes, he, he moved to he moved to Tennessee. I was about to say he goes to Windrock or Hot Springs. I think are the two that he, he frequents the most. So. <laughs> Is that the reason why you like Hot well, Springs? Well, that's the thing. <laughs> it's it's the trails that are closest to you. Like I, you know, the two closest to me are you are in Windrock, and I'm like, hey, venture out there, check them out. Are they fantastic? No. Are they good? Yeah. You know, they're they're entertaining and they get you outside and, and you're it's just like a golf course. You know, I, I could That's really a good analogy. honestly I, like I could care less. I don't I don't care so much about what when where it's it's the camaraderie I'm there with my buddies on the trail. It's it's hanging out, it's having fun, it's being outside. That's what I enjoy. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be outside, I'm gonna enjoy nature. I might have a trail that I'm gonna have issues with, I might not. But that's it. I'm going to go. I personally go to what's close. They're like, "Hey, come down to te- Texas for all these events. Do this and that." I'm like, yeah, "I can't believe you. I can't believe you showed up. That was amazing." Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to ride it with Matt next time. Um, <laughs> but I mean, that's it's. You know, it there there is. You know, I've got I've got a brand new Jeep, and they're like, "Wow, you got thirty thousand miles on this thing already." I'm like, "Yeah, I, I drive a lot." Yeah, it know. just. Well, no, but my Jeep is a year and a half old. Time. It's a year and a half old, you know, and it's 22 and I'm, I'm a year and a half and I've got 30,000 miles. I do want to, you know, I, I don't plan on reselling it or getting rid of it, but, you know, my my watch has got over 200,000. You know, Larry's thinking about getting you know, a died. Gladiator. Now, my, now might be a good time for you to get a Gladiator, uh, Travis. Uh uh, well, twenty twenty five is when I'll be thinking about getting something else again. They got new engines coming out, and I'm gonna I'm gonna wait till that. I just keep seeing different reviews and different things I, talking I think about the straight six, the new the engine. hurricane or whatever it is. Uh, I think that would be pretty amazing. I mean, it's just amazing that we're going just, from you know straight six to V eight, and then back to straight sixes. <laughs> I don't think they'll be able to fit the hurricane in the Jeep in in the Jeep engine bay. It's just a tall engine, and if you look at it, it's it's a tall. So you're saying engine. hood scoop. I and, like what you're saying there. <laughs> it, it just I I've looked at it. I've I've talked to people that work in the industry. That tall engine. I mean, will it happen? I think it will. It's going to be a matter of a body change again, and I don't think that's going to happen for a while. You know, twenty five is is where I think they will make some engine changes. Uh, with the redesign on the interior of the body and everything mm-hmm. else, but it's just it's a tall engine for that that six. That hurricane is tall, and but they're gonna have to redesign the, the hood. The three ninety two and the JL. Oh, you can't fit that in there. Like you just you can't. You I, can't I, I, again, I mean, I'm not saying I I have <laughs> zero background. All I'm doing is my personal research and what I feel. I can be wrong, and I will agree to accept I'm wrong. Whenever you know twenty five rolls around, and that's the case. But that engine is taller than that three ninety two. So nothing against the women out there, but as I always say, a man will make it fit. Uh, yeah, valid. <laughs> they will do it. I'm just scared they'd try to go to independent suspension on the front half if they tried to make oh, it fit, and that's what worries me the most. That would be uh, like if they killed off the wrong uh, Walking Dead uh, team member. Uh, the, there would be riots if they uh, they got, got I don't, away from I solid don't axles. I disagree, yeah. but that's how I see it being fit. Based on the body, based on the current JLU hood and, and, and space, I see it having to be a independent suspension to fit that engine in there. Hmm. Not with the uh, straight. We I know the hood is higher on the 392 than the, the regular JL. Yeah. Not much, but yes. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. So I think one thing that's that you want to look for in a destination wheeling place is that you can spend more than and we'll see what happens uh, in the future with uh, with Jeeps and what they're going to be doing and what engines they're going to be fitting inside of uh, 
uh, of uh, the the future Jeeps. But I got to figure if they were able to put a 4.0 uh, in uh, in many of the Jeeps, they can uh, they'll figure out a way of doing it with the uh, this new six cylinder. Uh, but you know, Travis uh, Travis may be right. We'll just have to, uh, to wait and see. Hey, coming up in our next JTS interview, which is every Friday, Melanie White, president and CEO of Hellwood, Hellwig, <laughs> Hellwig Products, uh, the HellwigProducts.com. It was a really, really interesting interview, and uh, she is a, a a big person at SEMA, and uh, that information about SEMA and what her role at SEMA is going to be uh, is is going to be uh, something that you'll want to hear in this interview. It was uh, very interesting. And uh, lots of uh, great information on that. And that brings us to the end of this exhilarating Jeep Talk Show Roundtable episode. I want to express my deepest gratitude to our incredible panel of Jeep enthusiasts for sharing their valuable insights, experiences, and expertise with us today. Your passion for Jeeps is truly inspiring, and we're grateful for your contributions. Oh, and thanks again to Tyree Lights for sponsoring this roundtable episode. Uh, have a look at the amazing lights they have to offer at tyreeoffroad.com. That's T-Y-R-I offroad.com. I have Tyree Lights on my 2021 Jeep Talk Show Gladiator, and I never have to be afraid of the dark again. Remember to support the companies that support the show you love, the Jeep Talk Show. Visit tyreeoffroad.com. Again, that's T-Y-R-I offroad.com. So until next time, keep those Jeeps running strong, hit those trails with confidence, and remember, it's not just a vehicle, it's a way of life. This has been Tony hosting the Jeep Talk Show Roundtable episode, and we'll catch you on the next ride. Broadcasting since 2010. You're my friend. You're my new friend. <laughs>